I think it gets me out of the house and that's what, yeah, something to do during the day is really useful. It gives me occupation, it gives me purpose of life. They keep me, keep me in a safe place, you know, without this. And any time I can go to the press or getting too excited and end up in the hospital. It gives me the space to be myself, whatever kind of mood I'm in. And uh, they're so supportive. If you're having a bad time, they just back you up. And um, it's really nice having other people in the same situation as you. You don't have to explain. You know, a lot of us are on a, a huge amount of medication and it messes your life up. And uh, it's really good to be able to say, yeah, this is happening to me as well. It's a, it's a very special place. If, uh, if anyone could come here, it would do them the world of good, it really would. It is actually the 40th anniversary of the creation of Portugal Prince this year. Seeing Gaynor Reynolds this evening, who started the project, was just such an emotional mm. moment for yes. us. To have an external exhibition like this is very unusual for us. We did have work included in a wonderful group show at the Royal Academy of Arts. But to have a Portugal Prince show something, I thought, gosh, we've got to invite everybody. This is a really good excuse to have a little bit of a reunion. And um, because we are, because the project is the kind of community that it is, thriving and growing and still had the dynamic that was uh, still will remain relevant. And I liked how our speaker referred to the heart and the soul. I mean, what, what's so lovely is I, I left Portugal Prince about 10 years ago. I worked here for 20 years. And the place was full of people I know. But whether you were paid or not, you had an experience of family that you never had before. And it was the most funny, creative, wonderful place. And it's so lovely to see that it's still alive and, and talking. We were in Portugal Street, hence the name Portugal Prince. And it was, the project was started in 1979 when it was part of the drive to bring people out of long stay hospital situations mm. into the community. I've been wanting to collaborate with Jewel for quite a few years so I'm just absolutely thrilled and we've timed it for an exhibition slot which links in with London's Creativity and Wellbeing Week. We are really, really privileged here to have such a commitment to the arts through Peter, uh, just getting all kinds of people from all walks of life who are interested in the arts, who are interested in creativity, who are interested in community, and we come here and we have lots of great evenings like this. All their good work, I commend you for that. Many organisations forget the value of art uh, to people's journey of recovery. So these little gatherings of people which become a form of community linked with the arts, pulling it all together, is sort of a constant theme in, in the gallery. You know, this is the bright end of the, the story, the bright end of the rainbow. It isn't always like that with Portugal Prince. There's a lot of sadness and a lot of difficulty as well. But it's very nice to be able to yeah, show off. Show off. I was just going to say that. We wanted something that gave people the space to explore difficult feelings and emotions as well as yeah. the brighter side of, you know, the happier end of the rainbow. And this t the title that Peter came up with was perfect. <laughs> And um, 
I really enjoy that. Uh, it's one of my favourite mediums. My main piece is a diptych of Suicide Bridge in Archway. And we found some articles from different newspapers about what a wonderful view you get from this bridge. <laughs> and all tourists should go there. And then another article saying so many people kill themselves there, they should put a barrier up. And in both of them, there's a vanishing point. It's quite the um, main sort of thing, is the vanishing point through the bridge. And it's kind of about how people vanish. Well, I spent at least 25, 30 years drawing on the streets of London. And one of my main subjects was the homeless and people that were pretty invisible. and and the marginalised and I've seen people die in doorways over the years and, and um, seen some terrible, terrible things. I met so many wonderful people, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone else what I did. It was too, very tough and a, a, bit, a bit hard, but I've got a wonderful collection and hopefully one day people might get to see them, you know. Because it was said the light and dark side yeah. of London, I thought, well, I've got so much on the dark side of London. It wasn't difficult to get hold of them. But I do do very gentle stuff that, I, that hasn't been seen in the exhibition. Lots of beautiful drawings of women. The theme was London, light and dark. So I have some drawings of um, cityscapes which seemed appropriate. And I did the poster actually for the exhibition which is very big outside the hospital. Uh, I was really pleased to see my work blown up into that scale. I've never seen it before. It looks good big because it's a city, you see, so you, know, you get that feeling of uh, uh, it, London's got great energy and dynamism. That's the lightness. But at the same time, it's got suffering and poverty. It's beautiful, but difficult. And especially if you have mental health issues, you feel a bit marginal. But um, it's a city where money counts more than anything else. But on the same time, there's some good people. We need to do something about the homelessness in London and improve the situation for people who are poor. I was really impressed that, that uh, the artists, with your support, had, had gone well under the surface of the subject, so it was not just topography of London. I loved the way that you, as you looked through the work, you identified these different mm. things and you, that you were seeing how it would work in the gallery space. They worked uh, really hard to put together a very um, professional exhibition. It's uh, impressive, I think, especially the curtain effect of the little artworks that were all hung together. It's um, a very effective way to present small art. The process of, uh, of installing this exhibition involved uh, looking at a vast amount of work and when the selection was made there was work linked to London's typography and there was also more personal work to do with portraits and there was a, a wonderful opportunity to separate the two themes just to draw intensity to it. So uh, this wall, which is only, the only person is this child feeding out the streets through his hands, suggests that the future of our, where we live is really in the hands of the young. On the wall opposite, we've placed all the images of people. These are sort of very moody works that give the feeling of what it's like to live in a city. The only uh, change we made was this one piece by DJ Kong, which I think is a bus going through a London street and 
There's the uh, images of a, a woman's face suggesting the environment of London. And of course, there's a, a very striking piece that we've chosen for a major area. Possibly captures the theme of London's light and dark. This is, is an extraordinary experience and very validating for lots of people who feel so invisible to have a chance to get to talk about themselves, to show their artwork. I'm very interested in, in, in people that have been wounded mm. by life. It's very important to me. I was always interested in people that were completely invisible, mm. people nobody wanted to know. And, this, this was my main subjects. I met thousands of people um, over the last 30 years who talked to me. And I never sit in front of them sketching, and they never know I'm drawing them, ever. It's um, sort of done discreetly. There's, there's a feeling that you've connected with them. It's a portrait of a real person. That David was exploring here was the loneliness really of mm. being in London. You know, he was he was he was talking about telling us about a positive part of the city, which is all the beautiful parks. But in each picture yeah. that person is alone in the park, aren't they? It, I, I loved it when I first saw it. And there was a very personal reason because my brother, who was also called David and sadly is no longer with us, had uh, mental health issues. Um, and of course it's signed in the bottom right hand corner, David. David I just yeah. thought, it's got to be. <laughs> They're amazing because they work all the way around. And uh, my madness in my brain is actually the portrait I paint. It's kind of fun, a little bit fun, and a little bit sadness there. And uh, this is one of the pieces I made, it's some other work over there. And mostly abstracts, and I play with the different material, different ideas, finding a new way to do artwork. Muru is very generous and inspiring person to have in an art group because you're always so happy to share techniques and introduce other people for different methods and and that that kind of creative exchange is I felt that through the weeks that you've come in and brought energy and different ideas in different ways of working with your sort of mixed media pieces of work interesting set of London characters. The, these were done on napkins at uh, the pub in Moscow Road. We would just sit there and I'll draw people of various types that would enter in or work there. And I sit there, sort of observing, but not interfering. They were una are they aware that you're drawing? No, I'm very stealthy, very ninja-like. The best things I like as an artist, m my style, the best things is like classic things, like the taxis, so basic classic things. And I, I would like to collect loads of images and stuff up, but my style is like more classical. And it's inspired by my view through my bedroom window because I moved recently and I'm on the 15th floor and I have a lovely view, especially at night time. So these, this is a picture from my window. And this one, it just inspired me to paint it. There's a nice feeling of colour in your work. I do enjoy using different colours. They're very vibrant. My main medium is acrylic on watercolour paper. All your work is very bright. And, mm. and then using black at the same time to contrast. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, it just makes a uh, very interesting and, yeah. you know, attract your the eye. It was the movement of the camera. When I took the picture, I just moved it and I got that sort of effect. Because we were thinking about the movement in London yes. and sometimes how busy it can be at night as well. Yeah. To have that for people.
people to have that experience of um, exhibiting, sharing, selling, understanding, getting an understanding of what goes in yeah. all the all the work behind the scenes of putting yeah. an exhibition together. That's been a brilliant learning yeah. experience for everybody, us, you know, right across the board. And from us, we we're really looking at this as absolutely being a a reflection of what Portugal Prince is doing. Um, uh, so we hope that everything will open more doors for you. For some of our artists to do some little interviews, it's it's just it's it's the best if you like report. We're always being asked to evaluate and report and monitoring and so on on the benefits of the work that we do. But the best way of hearing about is to listen to people's stories and people's responses to, you know, how helpful. We all know, of course, that art making is helpful for them. Thank you.